Hi guys, yes, yes, que Carlos se disfrute to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making a no-bake chocolate biscuit cake. So simple to make. It's also very pretty. We're going to make it in a round spring form pan, so it is going to look like a cake. I've made this before with my nieces and nephews in New York. Uh, with my niece and nephew in New York, Evan and Ellie, we did little chocolate cupcake versions of these, but I think it's really nice to make it in a, in a cake pan, so I'm just redoing it and sprucing it up a little bit make it with the kids because it's a fun one to do. Let's get started. So we're going to start off by making the chocolate syrup part of this and we're going to need two sticks of butter. That's eight ounces. Each stick is 113 grams, but the gram measurements are going to be on the written recipe on the website as they always are. And this is unsalted butter. A cup of granulated sugar, a half a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, and a cup of whole milk. And I'm just gonna cook this over medium heat until the butter starts to melt and I'm gonna whisk it until everything is nice and smooth. Once it's done cooking, I'm gonna add four ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. This is a baking bar. I'm just gonna break it up and it's just gonna melt in there. I'm also gonna add a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, but we'll get to them when we get to it. So the biscuits that I'm using today are these Biscoff cookies. I love them, they have so much flavor. They're traditionally made, this cake is traditionally made using any tea biscuits. Um, you can use any butter cookies if you want, if you have any leftover cookies and you wanna combine them. Any cookie will work, your favorite cookie will work. I just love these, they're so flavorful. So that's why I'm using them and, I'm, and they're also easy to find. So I'm just gonna crumble these and this is where the kids get involved. They love doing this part. They love to get in there and crumble cookies and they love making this recipe. It's such a fun one to make with the kids. I make it every time I visit uh, my sister in New York with her kids. They just, they ask me, when are we going to, uh, the second I get there, they're like, when are we going to make the chocolate cupcakes? That's what they call them. Okay, so once the chocolate sauce is done, just go ahead and pour it all over the biscuits in the bowl. And I'm going to have to face it towards me to get all of this chocolate out. You don't want to waste a drop and just mix everything all together. You can throw some of your favorite dried fruit in here if you want to, like cranberries or dried cherries. You could even put some white chocolate chips in here if you, li if you like them, but I wouldn't put them in until this cools down just a little bit because they'll melt and then you won't even be able to see them. But nuts, if you wanna put some toasted chopped walnuts or hazelnuts or even caramelized chopped nuts, you can flavor this any which way you want or leave it plain like this because it's so chocolatey and gooey and good. Okay, so I'm just gonna set it aside for a second because the final step is to get it into our cake pan. I'm using a springform pan um, because it's just gonna be so easy to release it later on and put it on, you know, on a serving plate. And I'm just putting a piece of parchment down on the bottom just so it releases evenly. It should release because this is nonstick, but you never know. Okay, now I'm just gonna pour the whole mixture into the pan. Oh, it smells so chocolatey and good. It smells like brownie batter or hot chocolate. And you wanna press it down so it kind of compacts. Now in Cyprus, this cake is known as a dukisa and they make it in loaf pans. Um, they slice it and serve it as cookies. It's just a nice chocolatey dessert to have on hand. It would even double as a cute birthday cake if you want to get the kids involved and just make something easy. You could see how this can easily be doubled or even tripled to serve a large crowd and it would be just stress-free, very easy to make. Okay, the only thing that needs to be done now, this needs to be put in the refrigerator and chilled for about an hour or two until it sets. All right, so the cake is ready, it's chilled. I, like, I put mine in the freezer so it can chill a little bit faster, but this is a great dessert to make um, the day before because you could just leave it in the fridge and then just take it out right when it's time to serve. Run the knife around the sides of the pan so it can release evenly or easily. And then over here, I have four ounces of semi-sweet chocolate that I just broke up. And I took half a cup of heavy whipping cream and I just poured it into this little pot right here and I brought it up to um, until, until it was scalding hot, right about till when it was about to start to boil. And the heat from the heavy cream is gonna melt the chocolate and it's gonna create a shiny ganache. 
that we're going to pour on top of our dessert. Look at that. Look at how pretty that is. I'm also going to put a little splash of vanilla extract in here. Like maybe a half teaspoon. Beautiful. I have a cake pedestal over here because I want to, you know, make it a little bit fancy and display this cake the way it should be. If I can get it off, let's see. Is this going to work? There we go. I'm going to leave the parchment paper underneath it. Um, you can take the parchment paper, paper off once um, it sets completely or you can just leave it underneath. It's totally up to you. If, if it was to sit in the freezer a little bit longer, then I would have been able to very easily flip the cake upside down, but I don't want to end up wearing it. So I'm just going to leave it on there for now. And I'm just going to pour this beautiful ganache on top. And I have an offset spatula that's going to help it get all the way to the edges. And if it drips down the side, that just adds more beauty, if you ask me. It just look, gives it that nice little drip edge. It's going to look really pretty. And just like this, if you ask me, it is perfect. But I have these little pearls. These are like candy pearls that I got from the cake decorating shop. And I think they add just a little touch of elegance. They look really pretty. I'm just going to add them wherever like each cake slice is going to be. Or if you want to, you could just go all around the perimeter of the cake. But these look pretty. They don't really taste too great. They're kind of hard. So I'm just going to add just a few just so it can look really pretty. That's it. So you get eight serving slices out of this. Put it on a cake pedestal, like I said before, because this deserves to go on a pedestal. It's so pretty and so easy to make. It's time for the taste test. Mmm. So chocolatey. Not too sweet though. That's the surprising thing. And those Biscoff cookies go perfectly with the chocolate. They have a little bit of a toffee flavor. They're still a little bit crisp. The whole thing is delicious. Make this for the holidays, you guys. It can be that simple. Just put this thing together. You don't have to bake anything. Get the kids involved. Decorate it with whatever you want. If you're not into these little candy toppings, you can put some whipped cream, homemade whipped cream on top, and then berries on top of the whipped cream. That'll take to the next level, lighten it up a little bit, add some freshness. You can do some candied nuts. You can do ground pistachios for a little pop of green color. Get creative and let me know how you're making it in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. The recipe, as always, is on the website, DemetriusDishes.com. I'll be back here next time with another recipe worth sharing. Yes, us.